Hey, third grade, and welcome back to week four, day two. So this is Tuesday. Now, yesterday you did two fact practices on freckle. Today, I hope you went and did your skip counting, get a little exercise. Two, four, six, eight, get your skip counting on, it's great. And your materials that you need for today, you need something to write with and something to write right on man right on all right moving on we are going to rip it apart our word problem for the day we're going to r read the problem i identify the important information p make a plan and p draw a picture e execute your plan solve it and d does it make sense take a look let's see so what we're looking at today says show six eighths on each of the shapes below. Whoa, so our word problem today is a tad bit different. So let's take a look. We're going to, let me get my ripped over here on the side. I'll do it under my head. I hope I can line it up right. Let's see, R-I-P-P-E-D, ripped. It's kind of there. Let me move it a tad. Whoop, there we are. Now, you might say, like, wait a second, Mrs. Jones. This isn't really a word problem, but it kind of is. Okay, we have our words, and we have show six eights on each of the shapes below. Hmm, so it's kind of giving me a direction saying, this is what I need to do. And what do I need to show on each shape below? Six eights. Okay, makes sense. So if I take the fraction, oh, and I read the problem, I identified the important information. I knew six eighths on each shape. Plan, hmm, looking at the fraction, six eighths. Well, the six tells me how many pieces are shaded and that eight, my denominator, it's on the bottom, so it's the denominator. So the denominator tells me how many pieces each shape or line is cut into. So if it's cut into eight pieces, hmm. So if I showed you eight fingers, so five, six, seven, eight, how many cuts are in between? There's always one less cut. So if there's eight pieces, I'm gonna make seven cuts in my rectangle. Let's see, so seven cuts in my rectangle. Seven, odd, even, it's an odd one, so I at least get one right in the middle. So my first cut for this would be right in the middle. Whoop. It's pretty close, about as close as I'm gonna get. So now I've got, hmm, if that was seven, so now I have three on one side and three on the other. So three and three, three and three, and one in the middle would be seven cuts. So I've got one in the middle. I need three on the other side. Oh, good golly. Is three even or odd? It's odd. So I get to cut in the middle and then I love when I can cut in the middle. And then over here, I get to cut in the middle and then one on each side of it. Now, are these perfect? No. Are they as good as they're going to get from me? Yes. So do yours have to be perfect? Mm, no. But does it have to look reasonable? Yes. I can't have all my cuts down in this end and then have this end be one big piece. That wouldn't work. So you need to make sure that if you're doing your cuts, you are making them reasonable. Okay, reasonable. Now, if I have eight cuts, let's count them and make sure we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I have eight pieces, seven cuts, eight pieces. How many of them am I going to shade? Hmm, let's see. So I'm gonna shade, it tells me right here, six of them. So let's shade six. So here's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And you can see I've shaded 
six of them. Looks good. Now I'm making a circle. Oh, good golly. If it is a circle and I need to cut this into eight equal pieces, that means I need to have four pieces on the top and four pieces on the bottom. Well, at least it's even. So let's cut this guy right in half. Whoop. Ready? Whoop. And now I need to have four pieces on the top and four pieces on the bottom. Well, I know if I cut right down, that'll give me two on the top and two on the bottom, and I can cut each one of those in half. Aha, so let's go straight down. That's four pieces. Now cut each one of these pieces in half. And that should give me eight pieces of pizza. Makes sense. And now I need to shade in eight, or sorry, six of these eight pieces. So I know the top half is already, I know that's four. So let's take a look. So we're going around the circle. Okay, that's four. Hmm, and I need two more. Four, and we'll go five, and we'll go on the other side. Six. Looks pretty good. And now my line. Think of this line like a big Twizzler, but this Twizzler does not have a beginning and an end. So the first thing I need to do is I need to put a cut that's a zero and a cut that's a one. Now in between my zero and my one, if I need eight pieces, I need seven cuts, just like with my bar graph. So in between here, I'm going to need seven cuts. Seven is an odd number. I'm going to go right in the middle. And then I need three more on one side and three more on the other. Three is an odd number, so I get to go one in the middle, and then in there, in there. One in the middle. Hmm, let's see if we let's see if we did it well. So this would be one eighth. This would be two eighths. It's a little small, sorry. This would be three eighths. This would be four eighths. This is five eighths, six eighths, seven eighths, and the one is equal to eight eighths. Woo! Now, this can be a little bit different. It says show six eighths on each of the shapes. So the bar, I would shade it in. The circle, I shade it in. Hmm. Now this, kind of like our line plot, I could put a plot mark, which would be a dot or a plot at six eighths. And it's going to go right in the cross of the line itself and the six eighth tally. So it's going to go right in there like a bullseye. Okay. So my plot goes right in the middle. Now I could also, if I wanted to, I could then shade up to that line and that would show six eighths. So it's kind of two ways on a line graph or on a number line. Whew, that was a good word problem for today. And without even realizing it, we made our plan as we figured out each individual fraction and we, whew, we drew the pictures as we did each individual fraction and we executed. So we kind of went, Plan, picture, execute. Plan, picture, execute. Plan, picture, execute. Now we're on D. Does it make sense? Hmm. Looking at our top picture, does that look like six eighths? Are our pieces, our segments, do they look legit? Yeah, it's not perfect. My lines are not exactly straight, but they're as good as they're going to get. It makes sense. When I look at that picture, hmm, compared to the circle, they're pretty comparable. They both have two spots that are not shaded. Two pieces that are not shaded. When I look down at my number line, I kind of see it there too. I see two spots. Let me highlight them for you. I see two spots that are not taken. So that makes sense to me. I think we did a great job. Good job, crew. And I will cross that off. Now we're going into drawing a line plot graph. So you ready? Hold your spot. And we're going to go into the PowerPoint. 
Okay, we're back and we are going to use the information from the tally chart to create a line plot graph. How do we start this? Where do we even begin? Well, first thing, we're going to give the line plot a title. Every graph needs to get a title. And that was the first thing that we did with the picture graph. And that was the first thing that we did with the bar graph. So, hmm, let's give it a title. And our title is going to be the exact same title that we have over here in our tally chart. Number of vowels and first and last names. Now they just wrote a little different. Vowels and first and last names. Same thing. Then our next step we're going to do is we need to draw a line and label it. So we need to, just like when we're graphing fractions on a number line, we need to draw the number line and we need to label it. So there's my beautiful line and there's our little cut marks. Now, if you notice, this doesn't start at zero. These do not have to start at zero. It all depends on what we're graphing. If we're graphing measurements and we're saying a two inch plant and a three inch plant and a five inch plant, I don't need zero. So my line plot, I'm just writing what I need. So I've got my number line and I have my, um, my numbers and I do them in order too. Now our next step is to draw an X above the number for each result. So if we look at two vowels, how many people have two vowels in their first and last name? One person, so they get one X. Then we look at three. How many people? Two people. Then we look at four vowels. Holy smokes, look at all of those. We've got seven of them. Hmm, five, even more. Now, did you notice that the X's are the same size? Just like in a pictograph, you need to make sure that your X's or your pictures are all the same size. If I have them different sizes, then my three vowels might look bigger than my four. Six, you can see we did three X's and seven or more, we did two. This is pretty easy to draw, isn't it? We're just making X's. So honestly, it takes out the whole decision making, like when you're making a pictograph, that you have to decide what picture you want to use. So now let's answer some questions on it. How many people responded to this survey? So how many people responded? Once again, just like in a pictograph, we are going to count all of the X's. Woo. So we're going to, let's start with the biggest one. So when we looked at the biggest one, and if I go back, I can see that the biggest one looking at the tallies without even counting them is eight. Hmm. So eight, I would put that right above here. And then this is one less. So this is seven. Eight and seven is 15. Hmm. 15. And three more. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. 21, 22, and 23. Oops, that's a one as I say it. 23, let's see. You got it. How many people have fewer than four vowels in their name? So not four vowels, but fewer than. So I would look at the three and the two, and I would just count my X's, and I would see that it's three people or three students. Good deal. Next one says Tyler's parents measure and record his height each year on his birthday. This chart shows how much he grew between each birthday. Display the data on a line plot graph. Now this is one of these where it doesn't have to start at zero and the numbers, hmm, they don't have to go like one, two, three. You can see that there's half inches and three fourths of an inch, and those would get graphed in between too. So first thing first, I put down my title. Thank you, Tyler's growth each year. Then I make my line, and with my line, I do my cuts. And you can see I started at the first or the lowest amount that he grew, which was three and one or three fourths. And I have two, two and a quarter, two and a half, two and three quarters, and then greater than two and three quarters. And then they're going to go through and graph this. So the first birthday, I see he grew four inches. So I would go through and I would I would cross that off. And then I would go and put, well, four inches would be greater than. 
Then I'd look at the next one, two and three fourths, and I would go there. Then two and a half, and I would go there. And two and a half again, and I would go there. Two and a fourth. See how I'm going through systematically? Two and a half. Two and one fourth. One and three fourths. Oops, then that would be one of mine over here. One and three fourths would be one of mine. And then two inches. Now, just because the way this program is set up, it just kind of puts them on as it goes. Let's see if we match. But I would go through the birthdays and plug them in. And we did pretty good. Now, here's another one. It says Mrs. Talbot dropped a few paper clips on each of her students' desks and told them to measure each and then create a line plot to show his or her results. Meg was given these paper clips. Draw a line plot for her. So, first thing first, we're going to put on a title. These are Meg's paper clips. After we draw the title, or write the title rather, we're going to draw a number line. Let's see it. Dun, dun. And we put the measurements in. Now, I'm going to take a look at Megan's paper clips. Now, Megan's got them organized. You can see in groups. So you have the purple and the yellow up here. These guys are both two inches. So I could go right to two inches and put the X's there. And then I look at her one and a half inch paper clips and I see she's got one, two, three. She's got them all organized for me for one and a half. So I go one, two, three. Then I look at her one inch paper clips and I see one, two, three, four, five. She has five one inch. So one, two, three, four, five. Now I didn't see any two and a half. So should I put an X or a zero or what there? Hmm. If I don't have any, I leave it blank. So let's see how they, oh, those are nice little X's. Mine are a little smaller, so they don't quite get as high. Then you look at the threes. Nice job. The twos, and let's see what they put for two and a half. Nothing. Why aren't there any X's above the final measurement? How come? Because she didn't have any. So Meg was not given any paper clips that measured two and a half inches. So because she was not given any, we do not put any X's there. We would just leave it blank. Woo. Now write an equation that shows the difference between the paper clips that measured two inches or more and the paper clips that measured less than two inches. So what kind of equation could we write? What kind of number sentence could we write? Hmm, how about eight minus two equals, hmm, because we have which ones measured two or more, and there were two of them. And then it said, what's the difference between the total number that measured more than two and the ones that measured less than two? So one, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight. So this is eight, and that's a group of two. So the difference between the two groups would be eight minus two. And that would be, what's eight minus two? Six paper clips. Woo-wee. So you can see that writing a, or creating a um, line plot graph isn't really that much different than doing a pictograph or a bar graph. What you're doing is just organizing the information and filling it in on a table or a graph. So piece of cake. So tomorrow, because we've already gone through the different types of graphs, we've done the pictograph, we have done the bar graph, and we've done bar graph as a horizontal and bar graph horizontal was my this way, or we've also done it as a vertical. So when you look at the bar graph, it's horizontal or vertical. So we've done two graphs. Then we've also gone over the line plot graph. So three different graphs that we're going to be going over tomorrow of reading information. So until then, bye!